Now moving on to kind of our introduction to how to use the NEC, uh, we're actually going to kick this off by just opening a few pages into our book and scrolling on uh, to page 3 of the NEC. Now on the topic of how to reference the NEC, you'll notice almost every page in the book in one corner of, or the other has a 70 A number. Uh, whenever I reference a page number or someone references a page number in the NEC, they're referencing this number after the 70. Uh, the 70 is simply indicative of the fact that this is NFPA 70 uh, or number 70 of their documents and so on and so forth. Um, however, that number after the dash is what to pay attention to in terms of a page number. So if you were to open to page 3 of your NEC, you would see it starts off with a contents section. Uh, and you can see that the contents are broken down into first an introduction right here, uh, and then chapters within your book. So we have chapter 1, general, chapter 2, wiring protection, chapter 3, and if we flip on a few pages here, we'll see chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, and so on and so forth. So you can use the contents section of the NEC to get a general idea of how it's broken down uh, and what the actual contents of the book are. However, if we flip on later on into the book, uh, we will see on page 25, there is a uh, section and chart that breaks this down for us here. Now, before we look at this little chart in the corner, I want to address this section right here, 90.3 code arrangement. I will tell you, this code is divided into the introduction and nine chapters as shown in figure 90.3 which is the figure we were just looking at. Chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4 apply generally. Chapters 5, 6, and 7 apply to special occupancies, special equipment, and other uh, special conditions, and may supplement or modify the requirements in chapters 1 through 7. Chapter 8 covers communication systems. I'm going to move on to the next little section. Chapter 9 consists of tables that are applicable as references. And finally, informative annexes. So taking that, I'd like to look at this table and break this down a little bit more. Uh, so as we can see here, the end of the day, to simplify terms, the NEC is broken down into nine chapters. Uh, beyond the chapters, there are informative annexes, and what they also don't reference is an index, which, which is essentially just a big lookup section for terms. Uh, these chapters are the broad uh, headings of what is going to be contained in them. Uh, so, as an example of what I mean is Chapter 3, Wiring Methods and Materials. Uh, some of the items that you could expect to find in Chapter 3 and are found in Chapter 3 would be your basic everyday use type of items in the electrical industry, such as MC cable or EMT conduit. Uh, or flexible metal conduit, uh, or AC cable, or NM cable. Again, just the basic, how do we actually make connections to things in electrical? Uh, chapter 4, equipment for general use. Again, uh, thinking of these broad items such as switches, receptacles, lock fixtures, panels, transformers, motors. Just these everyday use items. Uh, Again, knowing that what chapter you're in can kind of help you to expect what type of things you're going to find in there. Um, now, backing up a little bit and speaking on what our section was referring to as applying generally, uh, special conditions, all this big jumble of words, we can break that down a little bit more simply. Uh, if we look at these groupings that they have here, we can see that chapters 1 through 4 are all grouped together with a note that they apply generally to all electrical installations. Uh, what that means is that the requirements that we discuss in chapters 1 through 4 of the NEC are going to apply to probably 90% of conditions that we see every day. 
Uh, these are the everyday things in the electrical industry. So again, some of those common everyday wiring methods in chapter three. Um, discussing some of the things in chapter one, we get into definitions and basic safety items such as working space. Uh, getting into chapter two, we talk about basic uh, planning and site layout items like grounding and bonding, overcurrent protection, service entrances, um, and again, we already discussed three and four. So again, chapters one through four are going to be your 90% everyday items, and when it comes to an electrical exam, uh, they're also going to be uh, the heaviest part, particularly for a journeyman level exam. Most of your questions are going to come from from chapters one through four since they applied so broadly and so often. Moving into chapters five through seven, these are all going to be, as you can see by the grouping here, uh, special conditions. Uh, to break down these terms a little bit, so for chapter five, we see special occupancies. Uh, an occupancy you can essentially think of as a place or location. Uh, so some of the items that would be found in Chapter 5 would include uh, hospitals, uh, carnivals, uh, airports or airport garages, uh, marinas and docks, things of that nature. Again, a little bit specialty areas uh, that may have a little bit more stringent or special requirements. Uh, chapter 6 for special equipment. This is, again, going to be your things that aren't every day, um, such as solar equipment, pools, signs. Uh, things like that. And finally, for Chapter 7, Special Conditions, uh, you can almost think of these as what type of system are we connecting to or what's the intent of the equipment that we're using. So, for instance, is it for a fire alarm system or a, a signaling circuit uh, or a life safety system, things of that nature. And again, at this point, a lot of these terms may not mean a lot to you, um, but again, the main thing to keep in mind for those is just those special oddball things. Moving on from there, looking at chapter 8, uh, as it states clearly, uh, chapter 8 is what we usually refer to as a standalone chapter. Um, you could essentially take chapter 8 of the NEC out of the NEC and make it a completely different book, and it would not affect the rest of the NEC. Uh, in any way. Uh, chapter 8, all the requirements for it there within are entirely independent of any other chapter uh, unless chapter 8 specifically references another requirement elsewhere in the NEC. You will see sections specifically when it comes to grounding and bonding uh, where chapter 8 makes references to the rest of the code. It's also worth noting if we revisit our chapters 5 through 7, uh, that in a somewhat similar vein, uh, they do have the ability to modify or change the requirements in 1 through 4. Um, in other words, uh, unless otherwise stated, 1 through 4 will always apply to 5 through 7, but 5 through 7 remain uh, able to change that, whereas for chapter 8, 1 through 7 never apply unless specifically stated. Um, that can be a little bit tricky to keep in mind, but again, if you just take it as that 1 through 4 always apply, uh, 5 through 7 only apply as needed, uh, with 1 through 4 always applying to them unless specifically stated otherwise, and chapter 8 stands alone unless specifically stated, uh, breaking it down like that can help you a bit. Chapter 9 doesn't actually contain any specific code requirements. Uh, these are just reference tables. Uh, so you'll th see things in Chapter 9 like uh, conduit fill tables um, in terms of the cross-sectional area of the conduit. You'll see the area of wire conductors uh, and some other helpful information in the chapters, uh, chapter tables. Uh, somewhat adjacent, adjacent to the information you would find in the informative annexes. Uh, these are purely assistive and helpful items, um, such as uh, demonstrations of how to do some of the calculations. Uh, annex C uh, specifically is a very helpful annex that breaks down how many conductors you can fit in different sizes of conduit, things of that nature. 
And the last item, which again, they don't reference here, uh, but we'll go to all the way to page 868 uh, of the NEC is your index. Now, as you can see here, and I'll kind of open this so you can see over to the side as well, uh, the index is just a large section broken down alphabetically um, that will tell you where to go for different terms uh, and topics. Uh, so for instance, if I were looking up a question uh, about aircraft hangers and I didn't know where to go for aircraft hangers within the NEC, I could go to my index, look, go to my A section, and if I look, Sure enough, right here, aircraft hangers, it'll tell you to go to Article 513. Now, if I wanted to hop around a bit, and maybe I weren't as familiar uh, with the NEC, I could then go back to my contents, and if I go to Chapter 5, Special Occupancies, I can go until I find Article 513, Aircraft Hangers, and it'll actually give me a page number for that as well. Uh, so I can use that to navigate if I need to. Now, I've been using the term article uh, a bit, uh, which brings us to the next level of organization of the NEC now that we kind of understand our chapters. Uh, within each chapter uh, are a set of articles, with each article essentially being its own independent idea. And if we go back to our content section here, uh, the contents give us a breakdown of what articles are in each chapter. Uh, so, for instance, if I look at chapter 3 here, I can see article 300, general, general requirements for wiring methods and materials. Uh, moving on, the next article would be 305, general requirements for wiring methods and materials for systems rated over 1,000 volts, etc., uh, etc. Moving on to Article 310, Conductors for General Wiring. Uh, these will be the things that you reference the most often. You won't very often have the mentality when you're looking something up in the NEC of, well, what chapter is that going to be in? You're usually going to be thinking about what article is that in. Uh, and very often in the real world, you'll be told, go reference article such and such. Within each article, if we then break that down another level, and I'm just going to stay over here in Chapter 3, most articles in the NEC then have what is called a part, and you can see those there. So, for instance, Article 310, Conductors for General Wiring, has Part 1, General, Part 2, Construction Specifications, and Part 3, Installation. If I back up a little bit to... Uh, article 220 over here, you can see that this has seven different parts to it. And if I move down to Article uh, 250 right here, grounding and bonding, you can see it has ten different parts. So again, a part isn't something by name you'll be told to go to very often. Uh, however, having an understanding of what part you're in can greatly help you when you're trying to find information in a specific article. A really good example of this would be if we move on down to Chapter 4 and we look at Article 430 for mowers. Let's say that you were trying to find information about disconnect means for mowers, uh, and you were in Article 430 trying to find that. Well, if you were in Part 3 of Article 430, trying to find information for that disconnect, it's probably not going to be in that area. You're probably looking in the wrong section, because Part 3 deals with motor and branch circuit overload protection. Whereas if I look on down my parts here, I can see Part 9, Disconnect Means. So it's probably a little bit more likely that part nine is going to contain whatever information it is that I'm looking for for a disconnect means. Uh, another example of this would be back up in article 250, if we move back up here for grounding and bonding. Let's say I was trying to find the size of an equipment grounding conductor. Well, if I'm looking in part three for grounding electrode system, grounding electrode conductors, again, I'm probably not going to be able to find that information there. Uh, but if I move on down to Part 6 for Equipment Grounding and Equipment Grounding Conductors, 
I very well may be able to find that information there. So for a bit of a recap to where we've gotten so far, we have the chapters, which are arranged one through nine. Within each chapter, we have articles, uh, which their numbers are a little bit all over the place uh, for the most part. And then within the majority uh, of articles, uh, we have multiple parts there within. If we move on to the very first article uh, in the NEC, which is going to be Article 90, the introduction here, starting on page uh, 24, the next and final breakdown that we have is called a section. You'll notice starting right here at the top level, Article 90, Introduction, the very first thing we have is 90.1 Scope. The 90.1 uh, would be what we call a section. Uh, and we can see that the sections break down into multiple uh, fragments we could think of them as. So for 90.2, we have 90.2a, 90.2b, 92 C, and 90.2D. Now if we back up and look at C and D here, they further have more breakdowns within them. So a call out you may hear would be 90.2 uses and applications, C for installations covered, and then you may be asked to go look up 3. So again, that total call out there would at that point be 90.2 C3. Uh, and these can become more and more deep uh, as you move on. So for instance, if we look at this number 5 here in part D, that would be, we may have a call out that's 90.2 D5B. And again, that can go more and more layers. But again, if I'm making reference or someone else were to tell you to go look, for instance, uh, in uh, section 110.3b, uh, the 110 would tell you to go to article 110, 110.3b, and that would have that. Uh, and that's where you would go to find that call out for the code there. Um, so that, in essence, is again the simple breakdown of how to use and navigate the NEC. Again, we have a top level of chapters, uh, 1 through 9, each chapter being broken down into articles, with each article then being broken down into parts, and again, each article uh, and part having sections there within. Uh, again, for a, a high-level look at that, uh, we would have chapter 1. Since this article begins with a 1, we know it's in chapter 1. Article 110, part 1, section 110.3b, or for instance, 110.3a2. So again, uh, to summarize, that is our recap of how to use and navigate the NEC and the different terms for callouts. Uh, in our next lecture, we're going to be starting with a dive into Article 90, uh, the introduction to the NEC, where we'll be discussing a little bit of what's covered in the NEC, what the NEC does not cover, the implementation of the NEC at the local authority level, uh, and things of that nature.